earlier in the week, we talked about uh, Coleman Hughes and uh, Coleman Hughes not not exactly being canceled by um, the uh, the TED talks, but certainly uh, not TED talks kind of not living up to their agreement with uh, Coleman, uh, or seemingly not, and 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 creating a lot of problems because of the radicalness of his position. After all, I mean, he called for a colorblind society and, and as the best way to deal with, uh, with racism. Uh, and uh, so we talked about that. And uh, today, uh, today uh, 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 Andrew Sullivan in his, uh, what do you call this? Is this a substack? Yeah, it's a substack. In the substack, the weekly dish, uh, writes about that, but he also gives some additional examples of things that have just happened in the last few days that are kind of in the same woke um, kind of uh, a- a- attitude. They generate the same kind of uh, the same kind of general attitude. And I-, I just thought I'd share a couple of these examples uh, with you. So one is uh, the American Anthropological Society. American Anthropological Society uh, had a had a, had a conference. Um, I guess the American Anthropological Association. Uh, they had a conference, and the panel uh, was supposed it was supposed to be a panel on the at the annual meeting of the importance of biological sex in anthropological anthropology research. Right in anthropology research, you would think that biological sex has some uh, some relevance. Uh, well. There was a uh, there was a statement made by uh, members of the association, and ultimately the panel was uh, uh, canceled. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 group that complained about this claimed the statement. Uh, the statement was uh, transphobic. Uh, asserted uh, that is the the name of the panel was transphobic. Asserted that it quote relied on assumptions that run contrary to the settled science in our discipline. I guess the settled science in anthropology is that there's no such thing as sex uh, and would harm vulnerable members of the community. Uh, They further accused the panel, this panel at a conference, people talking about ideas, of committing, quote, one of the cardinal sins of scholarship, such as assuming that, quote, sex and gender are simplistically binary and that this is a fact with meaningful implications for the discipline, um, you know. Of course, the panel is about sex, not gender. Uh, maybe now it turns out there's more than one sex, or there's more than one sex, more than two sexes, uh, and and it goes on. Uh, quote people whose gender roles do not align neatly with their reproductive anatomy. Uh, w- would be offended by a panel like this and, uh, quote, there's no single biological standard by which all humans can be reliably sorted into binary male-female sex classification. On and on and on. I, I mean, even if, you, even if you believe that there is something here, that is, that the whole trans issue, there, 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 are, there are some subtleties, there are some issues uh, that are worth thinking about, that are worth acknowledging, with regard to uh, gender and uh, and gender dysphoria or anything like that, the reality is that for an academic institution to ban a panel, to cancel a panel, because it deals with the importance of biological sex and anthropological research, to, to cancel it is absurd, ridiculous, goes counter to the very essence of what a university is supposed to be doing, uh, and what a conference like this is supposed to be doing, where people discuss ideas, uh, and ludicrous in a sense that biological sex matters. Biological sex exists. Even if the margin, you think there's some shady areas of, of where it's not binary. Okay, bring it up, have a discussion about it. And indeed, the title of the panel is not even about whether it's binary or not, it's just Again, the importance of biological sex and anthropological research. But no, some people in the American Anthropological Association can't handle even that, right? Even that. And yeah, there are people who are into sex, right? So what? It's still the importance of biological sex. It is biology or not. Uh, and 
it is still true that even something like intersex is pretty marginal. All these issues are pretty marginal. They are basically, for the vast, overwhelming majority of human beings, they are two sexes, male and female. That's it. And, and that doesn't mean at the margin they're not some gray area, uh, you know, unique cases. All right, uh, th that's one. In, in, in a almost even more ridiculous uh, occurrence in Comic Con, Comic Con, Comic Con, right? Comic Con, you know, Comic Con. Um, in London, uh, there was going to be a discussion, a panel discussion about Harry Potter's newest, I guess, play. Uh, th there's a new Harry Potter play that's going to be produced in London, and uh, there was going to be a panel discussing the play. Well, an LGBTQ plus charity complained of the potential impact on trans individuals of the fact that they would not, they didn't have to attend, but it, just hearing about the fact that there was going to be a panel to discuss something that J.K. Rawlings might be associated with in some way. And just the fact that J.K. Rawlings is a creator of Harry Potter was enough to get the panel at Comic-Con, Comic-Con, not an academic institution, uh, canceled. Canceled. Uh, J.K. Rawlings was not going to be there. I'm not even sure J.K. Rawlings it was directly associated with this production. But J.K. Rollins, uh, her views on trans issues are not consistent with uh, LGBTQ plus whatever, uh, and therefore uh, it had to be pulled. It, 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 truly, is, it truly is stunning uh, the extent to which uh, these uh, crazy woke leftists, uh, and particularly in the, in the trans, in the gender community, it seems like it affects that question more probably than race now. It, it really seems like the, the trans issue is the number one issue one can get canceled uh, out there for. It is amazing how much power they have. It is amazing how much, how, how few people are willing to stand up against them. It is amazing that everybody just folds uh, before them. And in spite of the fact that I think there's, there's been already a lot of backlash in England, a lot of the uh, clinics or the main clinic that was doing a lot of the transitioning uh, for, uh, for um, underage people, underage for kids, uh, has been closed, and there's a lot of backlash against uh, the whole trans phenomenon in educational institutions in the United States. In spite of all of that, so many of our cultural institutions, even Comic-Con, are kind of sensitive to this and, and capitulate and, and fold and... And uh, I, highly I, I highly recommend the weekly dish, this particular one. Could MLK give a TED Talk today? It's called. And uh, uh, Andrew Sullivan examines the question of why, what is it uh, that makes all this possible? He doesn't go all the way. He doesn't give the full answer. Uh, but what's really powerful about what he writes is his identification, which shouldn't be new to any of you or shouldn't be new to anybody who's read Ayn Rand, that ideas matter, that ideas move the world, and that uh, leftist, leftist ideas from 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago uh, apply to all of this and are dictating the way people respond to all of this. And that the left's focus and the left's uh, focus on capturing the acad academia, capturing the intellectual high ground gives them kind of a disproportionate, unbelievable power over the culture more broadly, over every aspect of the culture. And that this is just an expression of ideas matter and ideas shape the future. And uh, so, so he, he, he talks about uh, Chris Rufo's uh, latest book, America's Cultural Revolution, which he, is, he likes parts and doesn't like other parts. I probably agree with which parts he likes and which parts he doesn't. And, but the book focuses... On, uh, on radical leftist thinkers that have shaped the modern left, uh, Hubert Marcuse, uh, Marcuse uh, uh, Angela Davis, Paulo Ferrer, and Derek Bell. And uh, so uh, I encourage you to read the, uh, the article. And, and Chris Rufo's book is probably worth reading, even if at the end of the day, um, 
uh, even if at the end of the day, uh, you know, he, uh, e even if at the end of the day, you don't agree with everything he writes, it's, uh, it's probably worth uh, reading.